everybody and welcome to the new episode of Faith in Real Life. My name is Pastor Dima and I'm here to share with you some practical tips and tools how you can make the faith of your children stronger and more real. Uh, we are going to be talking about an exciting concept today, self awareness and our faith skill for today is expressing emotions. I would like to start off by reading Psalm 62 verse 8. It will uh, lay a foundation for everything that we will be talking about today. Psalm 62 verse 8 says, trust in God at all times. You people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Our main focus will be on this call to pour out your heart before him. We are going to talk about how can we as Christian parents teach our children to bring their heart to God and pour it out before him. Uh, so, to make it easier for them, I suggest that we first introduce them that there are two distinct worlds. There is a world that we can see and touch and smell, and then there is an invisible world that we cannot see or touch or smell, but that world is just as real as the world that we can touch and see. There is a world around us, and then there is a world inside of us. So here is a little exercise that you can do with your children. You can give them all a notepad and a pen and just gather them in your living room and say, you know what, let's take the next two minutes and let's write down everything that we can see or hear or smell or touch or maybe even taste. And just give them two minutes to explore the world around them and take notes if they're able to write. If not, they don't have to uh, write it down. Then you can take it a step further and take them into a backyard and say, all right, let's now use our senses to explore our backyard, the world around us. Write down everything that you can hear and see and smell and touch, maybe even taste. And again, give them a little bit of time. And each time when you call time, just say, all right, uh, share with me a couple of things that you have seen or heard or experienced. And they will start getting a picture. All right, so there is a world around us and we can be in touch with that world by listening, by looking around, by even smelling. And uh, that's how we explore the world around us. And then we, you can introduce that there is a world inside of us. And even though we cannot reach and touch it, feel it or smell it, that world is very real and it's made up of our imagination, of our thoughts and our feelings. And maybe you can ask your children just to close their eyes and just see if they can take a little peek into the world of their feelings, into the world of their um, emotions, into their thoughts and just let them uh, write it down or let them just share are they feeling anxious? Are they feeling peaceful? And uh, this would be a very good analogy for you. There is a world around us, and this is how we explore it and discover it. But then there is a hidden world inside of us, and we can also tune in and discover it uh, by being observant. And uh, let's be honest, the world of feelings, the world of thoughts, the inner world, it's not easy for children. Sometimes we need to train them and even give them vocabulary to identify their inner thoughts and feelings. So here is a little activity that you can do with your children. You can uh, uh, get a paper bag. Here I put heart because the Bible says, pour out your heart 
before God. And before we can expect our children to pour their heart before God, we need to train them how to tune into their heart, how to draw out of their heart the things that they feel and think. So here is a little game that you can play with them beforehand. You can uh, just fill this bag with anything that you can find in your home. Things that would be uh, familiar to your children, but also challenging enough to discern by touch. So you would uh, feel it in, and then you all can take turns reaching into the bag and trying to identify objects without looking at them. And this would give your children an idea, oh, it's a lot harder to know what it is without actually seeing it. And this is where you can explain that our heart, our soul, our inner world is filled with thoughts and emotions, but sometimes it's hard for us to know exactly what they are or even describe them. And you can explain that you as a parent will be walking your child, will be training them and teaching them. And you can say, sometimes you will get stuck and I may say, what are you say? Uh, what are you thinking or what are you feeling? And it may be hard for you, but just remember this game. Together we are going to feel it and see what is it. Feels like a bouncy ball. Yes, it is. Sometimes we'll get it right, and sometimes it can get us a little bit longer to get there. So now let's get to this practice of expressing your emotions to God. We, 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 we all want our children to have a real relationship with God, a, a relationship that's not just heady, a relationship that's not just content-based, but heart-based, uh, a relationship that flows out of their hearts. And that's where this Bible verse comes that people trust in God at all times and pour out your heart before God. So one of the ways you can unpack it to your children is by finding a container. Here is one that I found. I uh, put little eyes here just to give this container a little personality. And you can just explain to a child that this container is your inner world, is the world inside of you that nobody can see, but it's very, very real. And you can explain that everything that the child experiences makes a deposit into their world. So, for example, maybe they score a goal in a soccer game and everybody is cheering them and everybody is so proud of them and they're so happy. So here is this deposit of happiness and excitement and it just bubbles on inside of them. Or maybe mom and dad come and say, you know what, when summer holiday come, uh, comes, we are going to take our entire family to Disney World. And boo, here is a deposit of just joy and happiness through the roof. There also could be other kinds of deposits, uh, darker and sadder. Maybe a child's pets gets sick and even dies. And here now the inner world is filled with sadness and heaviness and grief. Maybe a child did something wrong. Maybe they disobeyed mom or dad. Maybe they reached their hand into that cookie jar, even though they knew mom uh, said no cookies uh, till after lunch. And now they just have this guilt and heaviness and they have a hard time sleeping and it's all on the inside of them. And in the times like we're experiencing now, I'm sure kids have had their share of lots of emotional deposits poured into their souls. Maybe a birthday party that they were so looking forward to got canceled because of the uh, stay-at-home restrictions. Uh, maybe uh, uh, during the FaceTime, their sibling got a lot more attention from grandparents and the child felt a little bit left out. And so here is a, a little bit more emotions there. Maybe a child is missing their classmates or teammates and they're just feeling lonely. And so all kinds of uh, 
deposits are going on on the inside of a child. And again, you can just do it together with your child and just say, what have you been experiencing lately? What kind of things have been stirring on inside of you? And you can uh, teach them to identify their inner experiences and their feelings. And then you can look into God's word. Psalm 62 verse 8 says, Pour out your heart before God. Oh, so God doesn't want us to hold on to our feelings. The inner world needs to be open to God. So we need to be pouring these things out. Why does God want us to pour these emotions and uh, thoughts out? So we can make room for what he has to give to us, like his love and joy and peace. But there will be no room for what he has to give to us unless we first pour out our heart to him. And so just using these everyday objects, you can explain to your child that you don't want to hold anything back from God. You want to pour it out. If you have received praise and compliments and a lot of attention, if you keep it on the inside, it can get rotten and make you feel uh, haughty and arrogant and prideful. Well, I'm the best player on the team. I'm better than anyone. And so we come to God and we pour out, God, thank you for making me fast. Thank you, uh, thank you for giving me a chance to catch that ball just in time and kick it and make a goal. Thank you. It was a fun game. And so when we pour that out before God, His love and peace and pleasure uh, pour into our hearts. Or maybe if a child saw something uh, uh, scary on TV, or maybe a child overheard the parents being worried and concerned because dad uh, lost his job and now they don't know how to pay bills. And now all that worry got absorbed into their soul. We don't want the child to carry it. We don't want them to hold it on the inside. We want to teach them how to come before God and pour it out before God. And there are many ways how we can pour out our heart before God. And that's why I prepared this printable for you. And it's available in the description that you will find under the YouTube video that you're watching right now. There is a download link that you can just click and this uh, PDF of this printable will go straight to your hard drive. You can print it or you can just uh, have it available to you. And there are some exercises that you can go with your uh, children through and just make it a little bit more real to them. Uh, what does it mean in real life to pour out your heart to God? So here I, I'm giving you examples. Let's look at examples how people in the Bible poured out their heart before God. And there are people that wept and our children need to know that crying is okay. And sometimes when we don't have words to say to God, our tears can be our prayers. Then there are people that sang, and we want to encourage them to express their faith and joy and hope through song. There are people that danced, and dance is a beautiful way of expressing joy and excitement. We don't want to hold it on the inside. We don't want to put a lid on our joy. We want it to come out through our movement. Then there are people who prayed. They poured out their feelings to God in prayer. And then there are people who journaled. So they maybe did not speak, but they wrote things down. Uh, I also suggest that children can doodle, they can scribble, they can sculpt with Play-Doh or other materials. Uh, and there are ways to give outward expression to what they feel on the inside. And then I am giving you some suggestions here uh, how you can create a bottle of tears just to help uh, your kids understand it's okay to be sad. And there are ways that we can express our sadness that will help us to pour our heart before Him. I also give you a suggestion how to uh, do paper airplane prayers. Uh, just a fun, creative way to make prayer interactive and exciting uh, for your children.
Also, here are some suggestions how to help your children express their feelings through dance or through song. So I uh, suggest that you take a look at it and don't be overwhelmed by all the activities that I packed in there for you. Uh, just pick one, take it for a test drive and uh, then take another one. But uh, whatever you do, do find time to invest into your child's soul. God wants us to trust in Him at all times and He wants us to pour our heart before Him. I hope this little episode gave you some uh, practical ways on how you can help your children to do just that. God bless you and I'll see you next week.